The following story has been brought to you by storiestoinspire.org. Years ago, when I was in Yeshivat Itri in Yushalayim, so one Sukkot, my brother and my sister decided that they were going to come to Eretz Yisrael to spend their Sukkot in the Eretz HaKadoshah. It turns out that they came a few days before the Yom Tov. Actually, they were already there from the time of Kippur. Now, what I'm about to tell you now is exactly the way we lived through it, exactly the way the newspapers in Israel, they ended up calling this later on, the Ness of Hanukkah. But this not, did not happen in the time of Hanukkah. This happened actually at this time, the time of the Chagim in Eretz Israel. Later on, we found out the story. Later on, we found out that there was a group of terrorists that were coming from Bethlehem, which was right next to the area of Talpiot in Yushalayim. There was a group, about eight of them, a few cars. And the plan was that they were going to come down the hill, driving straight into the yeshiva campus. And on the campus, there was not just the yeshiva of Itri, the Bet Midrash, the Kolel, the dormitory buildings, but there was also a young elementary school that moved there only recently, some time before. But this was a very large elementary school. They worked out of these, what they call in Israel, the caravanim, these little bungalows-like, these little makeshift type of trailers. How many kids was in this elementary school, you think? Between the boys on one side of the Itri campus and the girls on the other side, there was close to 1,500 children. And the way it happened was that every day, these boys and girls of this elementary school of modern, what you would call children, came out both at the same time. So at 3 o'clock every day, it was impossible to go outside to the yeshiva parking lot. The parking lot was a swarm of over 1,500 children, all coming out at once. And of course, the buses came down at the same time, and you have kids running in every direction. The teachers sometimes looked dismal. They looked like they didn't know what was coming off. Blain Hara, such a large crowd of children. The plan that these terrorists had as they staked out the property for some time, that they were going to drive down exactly at 3 o'clock. The moment that the bells go off, the moment that the bell rings for school to be out, and all the kids, the moment that they come out in pandemonium, these 1,500 kids with their teachers and with their rebbies, the boys, the girls from different sides of the campus, as the school buses come down, they were going to drive right down, swoop, drive into the campus, jump out of their cars with machine guns, and they were going to open fire on the crowd. That was the plan. And they worked on this plan for months. And finally, the day came. Here was the day. And sure enough, they all drove down that Hebron. They were all driving cars with Israeli license plates. Like this, they weren't stopped by the any of the pit stops. And then as they met together on top of the hill, at two minutes to three o'clock, they were perfectly in sync on time. They were about to come down to do the disastrous tragedy that they were about to do. And they drove down the hill together. And they drive right into the yeshiva parking lot. And it's still quiet. It's a minute to three. The bell didn't go off yet. And suddenly three o'clock strikes. And the bell goes off. And these men jump out of their cars, these terrorists holding machine guns. And it's quiet. And there are no kids. And they're looking around. And they're looking at each other. And the yeshiva campus looked like a ghost town. And they looked at each other. What could have gone wrong? Where's the swarm of 1,500 kids? Quickly, not to be nabbed, jumped back into their cars. They drove off, not understanding what took place. Later on, they found out that that day happened to have been Erev, Rosh Hashanah, and Hashemayim, the kids had no school on that day. But they weren't done. They said this time they're going to be smarter. So this time they actually called up the schools in advance. And on one day in Aseret Yimei Teshuvah, Right before Kippur, they rescheduled. This time, they weren't going to have the mess up that they came to last time. This time, they had it all planned out. They knew for sure the school had school that day. They knew exactly how many kids, what side they came from. They watched it time and time again. They even had video of it. And now, again, they came back to do what they tried to do the first time. The cars came from different sides of Jerusalem. One car, as we mentioned, came from the side of Bethlehem, 
And as the car was coming through, although all the cars the terrorists were driving were Israeli cars with Israeli yellow license plates, something caught the eye of this Israeli soldier at the stop coming through Bethlehem into Jerusalem, where they had that checkpoint. Something went off in the eye or the mind of this Israeli soldier. Borei Olam's Rahmanut, we all understand. But for some reason, why he picked out this Israeli car over the hundreds that were coming through, he jumped in front of the car. He waved his arms. He asked the driver not just to stop, but till today nobody understands what possessed this Israeli soldier to ask the driver and everybody on the inside to get out of the car. And they all got out of the car. The soldier saw that the driver began to sweat. He saw that the passengers began to sweat. Quickly, the soldier, he raised his rifle, he clocked his rifle, and he pointed it at them and said, open up the trunk. They didn't want to open the trunk. He says again, open the trunk. They didn't want to open the trunk. He raises his voice, open the trunk now. Right when they saw they weren't getting away with this, they all ran in different directions. The soldier ran after two guys. Other soldiers ran after the other guys. Finally grabbed them, brought them back to the car, and got them to open the trunk. Rabotai, the way the Israeli newspapers reported, there was enough C4 and dynamite. There was enough automatic weapons there. Has shalom, shalom neda. We should never know. We should never know. And they were caught. And once they were caught, they interrogated them. And they got out of them exactly what time and where the rendezvous point of the other three cars were supposed to meet on the top of the hill of Der Hevron in Talpiot. And sure enough, after they got out the information, the Israeli police, the military sent a few unmarked cars, parked themselves right at the top of the hill, and at five minutes to three, they sat and they watched as the other three cars on time pulled all together. They waited for the fourth car. They waited till a minute to three, seeing that the fourth car wasn't coming. They decided to do the mission on their own. They started to drive down the hill. But at that moment already, the Israeli police, the military surrounded them, arrested them, and found in the other three cars enough ammunition. Oy. And in the background, as they were arresting these terrorists, at the bottom of that hill, you were able to hear the bells of this elementary school going off. You were able to hear the yelling and the screaming of 1,500 kids running out altogether. You were able to actually see the school buses going down. They didn't even have a clue was about to come upon them. I was on the Itri campus on that day in Bet Midrash. My brother was already by me staying for the Chagim, as mentioned earlier. None of us had a clue that we were even in danger, let alone that Borei Olam was there to save us. It was only months later that the Israeli newspapers got wind of this story from the intelligence. They called it Nes Hanukkah because it hit the public on Hanukkah time. But it took place right now. We have to realize that as long as Kalal Yisrael is able to get the message, this is a wake-up call where again we call out to Ahenu Bet Yisrael. The tefillot are vital. The Torah is vital. We can't sit back and say, oh, it's a what's going on in Israel. What's going on in Israel is what's going on here. We're all in this together. This is not a time of Hezbonot. This is a time for Kalal Yisrael to act. And we need to get the message. This is not a time to be status quo. We need to react. We need to get the wake-up call and the message. Kalal Yisrael. This is a time for tefillah. This is a time that tomorrow morning, starting tonight, we pray with minyanim. We don't miss a minyan. This is a time that our Shemirat Shabbat gets better. This is a time where we learn an extra few minutes of Torah on our study. And if we haven't been learning Torah, now's the time to find the shul, Adaf Yomi Shi'ur, Something that will enable Klal Yisrael and the Haganah, which is our Torah that's magne umatzle, to continue to protect us. So that finally will be zoche, that no matter what's coming at us the coming year, Borei Olam will finally shine on us. The Geula Krova, finally it'll come the moment where we'll see and we'll be able to say, that Sarotenu die. Enjoyed this story? Come again. Bring a friend. Stories to inspire dot org.